All right, welcome back to Kirstie's Virtual Classroom. We are working on Lab 7, Volcanoes and Igneous Rocks this week. All right, so <clears throat> here's some background information, which is similar to what I talked about in the lecture or you would see in the textbook, um, just to give you um, background information. The textures are right here in front of you, just to kind of give you um, what texture term would have what observation and what interpretation. Okay, so part, part one is looking at viscosity. So this is an activity that if you want to do it yourself, you can, um, but the video does it for you. Um, that way, if you don't have some of these items, that's okay. So basically what you're gonna be doing is observing different flow viscosities. So different materials will have different types of viscosity. Some will have a lower viscosity, some higher. Now the way this translates into volcanoes and lava is that the higher the silica content, the higher the viscosity. The lower the silica content, the lower the viscosity. Okay, so <clears throat> here you're gonna look at honey, dish soap, and olive oil. Run down a plexiglass, basically, and time how long it takes for each of them to run down. So all your job is to do is fill out this chart here. So you're gonna fill out the distance, which I mentioned, and how long it takes for each of the trials. So we did three trials. You're gonna average the trials. Remember averaging is adding them all together and dividing by three. And then your flow rate is just centimeters over seconds. So flow rate is like saying your speed is miles per hour. But here, obviously it's not going a mile, so we're not gonna use miles per hour. We'll use centimeters per second. So just take the distance measured over the speed for each trial, and then that'll give you your flow rate and then you just average those numbers, okay? So you do that for the olive oil, the dish soap, and the honey. So again, you do not have to do this, um, like your own experiment, <clears throat> just watch the video and then write your observations down. So you can print this and write on it and scan it, or you can take a photo, you can redraw it. Whatever works for you is fine. And then you just upload it here. I think the copying and pasting in the last lab wasn't working very well, <clears throat> so I changed it to be an upload file. I think that works better for you guys. And I can see images and things. So if it's a JPEG or a PNG or whatever um, from your phone, that's fine. And you have a couple of questions based on that experiment. And then you get into the igneous rock identification, which is sort of the harder portion of this. <clears throat> but I have changed this from your mineral identification to be all multiple choice. So instead of actually filling out a chart, it'll just ask you, so what texture does sample one have? And then you'll select one. What rock sample is number one? So the way you figure out what rock sample it is, is by using the flow chart. So the flow chart should be fairly easy to read once you get it downloaded. <clears throat> so here, We've got coarse grained, fine grained, so these are your textures here, glassy, coarse fragments, fine fragments, and vesicular. So coarse fragments would be like those breccias that I talked about, and the fine fragments would be the tuff. So this is all ash, and this is ash and larger particles. Okay, so don't get those mistaken for fine grained and coarse grained. Fine grained and coarse grained have crystals that you can see, okay? So once you decide whether it's fine-grained or coarse-grained, maybe, then you get broken down into, okay, well, does it have quartz? Does it have olivine? And then from there, you can decide what rock you think it is, okay? And there's also color variations. So if it has quartz, it's the lightest colored of the coarse-grained rocks you look at. If it has hornblende, it's the darkest colored of the coarse-grained rocks you'll look at, okay? So this should be... it's similar to your mineral identification, um, but you're getting multiple choice instead of just filling it out yourself. Okay, so all of the questions will go through each sample. Um, and then what is the origin? So remember, it gives you kind of an explanation here. So if you decided that sample one was coarse grained, for instance, then you would say, okay, well, coarse grained rocks are plutonic, so I would click on plutonic. If it was fine grained, glassy, vesicular, or pyroclastic, I would click volcanic, okay? You can also use the chart at the beginning 
where it has an interpretation and it tells you whether it's plutonic or volcanic, depending on the texture term. Um, but simplified version is in the actual question here for you. Okay. So once you get through the rock samples, there are eight rock samples, then you're done. So this one's a little bit simpler. I'm trying to make it a little bit more straightforward for you guys. And hopefully that makes sense. All right. See you guys in the next one.